Today, I wanna to talk about why you should be changing the thermal paste on your GPU. This video is brought to you by my personal pocketbook. So if you'd like to help me out, like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page so I can make more videos like this one. All right, so this is a problem I did not expect to deal with right now. This is something that I thought be far flung in the future. It's just something that was in the back of my mind. I knew it was a thing that people did, but anytime I saw a video on the matter, the differences were very small. But the problem arose when I was playing Rocket League, no surprise there, and I started to get more stuttering, I started to get audio cutouts, and these uh, just frame dips in general. And I thought this had to do with my Xbox controller because that's a problem I had recently. So after much fiddling with that, it didn't help. But what did help was lowering the settings. So that led me to think that it had to do with the GPU. So when I went ahead to HW Info and checked out there, it was pretty obvious that when I was playing on high quality settings in Rocket League, my GPU was getting up to 81, 83 degrees Celsius, and I could see the clock dipping down. So it was thermal throttling. Throttling? Throttling. <laughs> so I had to figure out how to fix that. It's Rocket League, it's not that demanding. My GPU shouldn't be throttling. Even though I'm playing on a 1440p screen at 170 hertz, I didn't think that this was should be that taxing. So anyways, I went ahead and actually did some testing to see what the results were like. So first off was playing Rocket League at the highest settings, 170 hertz at 1440p, and the results I got back was a temp between 81 and max of 83. The clock at 1835 most of the time, but the longer I played, the more it dipped, and it got as low as 1695 with the stock fan curve maxing at 2300, just about 2300 RPM. Next, I did a high quality again, but this time I decided to max out the fan at 100%. So the results came back at 77 degrees with a max of 81. So a bit lower there and only one clock dip. So the thermal throttling, throttling was very minimal and it just came down a slight bit one time to 1721 with a fan stuck at about 3600 RPM. So this is a solution in a bit, like it's mostly working. There was only that single dip. I presume the longer I played, the more the whole case would heat up and it'd become a problem later on. But the biggest problem with that, having the fans so turned up, is that it was loud. If you listen here, this is with the fan at 100%. This is the GPU fan at 100% with the side panel on and the side panel off. Versus the normal stock fan curve with the side panel on and the side panel off. It's quite a difference and it's not something I wanted to live with on a regular basis just to play Rocket League. It was a bit ridiculous. So again, one more test here is with Rocket League turning down the settings to quality instead of high quality. And right there, we can already see that it's much better with a temp of around 72 to 75 as the max, clock stable at 1835, and a fan running between 2,421.20 RPM, just about there. So the fan noise, not as bad there, and the game was playable and it had no hiccups, which is great. But again, it's Rocket League. Why do I have to suffer? It's not a really demanding game, and it shouldn't require me to turn down those settings considering I have a 1070. And the last test I wanted to do before I replaced the thermal paste was simply with A to 64, just stressing the GPU, just that. And what you can see there is that it is throttling. It's maxing out at 82 degrees, much like it was with the other tests, and throttling down about 100 megahertz. So with those baseline tests, I was ready to apply the new thermal paste. So what I did was just simply remove it from my computer, get it on a desk in a safe working space, and started removing the screws. I only had six on mine. You might have more or less, but mine had six, it had four around the die, and it had two farther down the card. Now, you might be mindful about this. There's one of the screws that has a little sticker over top, a white sticker with a red circle, and that is kind of a warranty safe type of thing, where if you were to break that sticker, that will typically void your warranty with most AIB card makers. I believe EVGA doesn't, void your warranty, as long as you're not, you know, doing anything unusual, exotic with the card. But just keep that in mind, if you're gonna be doing this, it may be voiding your warranty. I wasn't really worried about this. This card I have is at least three and a half years old, almost four years old since I've had it. So it, it was time to actually do this. And the one thing I was surprised by was there wasn't actually much dust in there. I think that has to do with the fact that the settings within the ASUS software has it set default to silent fan. So the fan typically wasn't running unless I was actually using it for gaming 
or other workflow stuff. And once I removed the cooler from the PCB, it was very obvious right away that the thermal paste was very, very dry. And when I actually scraped it from the cooler itself, it just cracked and fell into little bits. So to clean this off, I used 99% isopropyl alcohol, a pile of cotton swabs and much more than I expected. So if you're gonna be doing this, be ready with the cotton swabs. And I used a coffee filter. You can use other lintless things. People have mentioned to me about not using, you know, other cotton type products. Uh, I haven't had any issues, but of course, the less dust, the better. Coffee filters are a good way to go. There's probably nothing better to use there. But anyways, I cleaned off the cooler and the dye, and this took about 15 minutes just to clean the dye. And if you can see here, I didn't do a perfect job. It's not perfectly clean, but I got the bulk of it away. There's a bit of residue left around the dye, but I didn't think this was a big problem. And the main reason I didn't go too hard here to make it absolutely perfect, it mainly has to do with those capacitors. I didn't want to affect the capacitors or break any of them off because they're very small and it's not too hard to actually break those off. So if you're gonna be doing this, just take care around those and don't press too hard because you don't wanna have to break one of those and have some professional fix this for you. Once it was clean enough for me, I ended up choosing my new favorite thermal paste Noctua NTH2. And you can pretty much use any thermal paste that you use for CPUs. I would suggest staying away from any conductive ones though. I used a relatively healthy amount and that's because you wanna cover the entire die. This isn't like an IHS like you would see on a CPU. This is the bare die. You want every tiny piece of that thing covered. Now you don't have to use as much as they might've used originally because if you look at it, they used a lot. Some people say that's gonna cause some kind of insulation and actually heat it up. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Uh, I haven't tested that myself, but from what we've seen with CPUs and how they react to excess thermal paste is that they don't really get much hotter. So use enough, don't go insane, but you wanna at least, it's probably better to have too much than too little in this case. I even went ahead and checked after I replaced the cooler to see that the coverage was good, and it was. So reassembly was easy enough. I just screwed it back together and make sure that the fans were plugged in. So I popped it back into my PC and I started with the original test and that was the Rocket League test. High quality, 1440p, 170 hertz. I wasn't expecting a lot from this. I, I knew it would be different, of course, because of how dry the thermal paste was on there previously. I was expecting between five and 10 degrees difference from what it was now to what it was before I reapplied thermal paste. But saying I was blown away by the results is probably an understatement because originally I was getting 82 to 83 degrees maximum. Well, in this case, my new max was 54 degrees Celsius. That's a 29 degree difference. I could not believe the difference. I still can't believe it. The clock was stable at 1835 and the fan never got above 1380 RPM. Absolutely fantastic results. Like this is, this is insane. <laughs> I was like unbelievably surprised. And it's not to say that my GPU isn't going to get hotter. Today I was playing a different game, Hold Fast, Nations at War, and I was seeing my CPU max out at 60 degrees Celsius. But within this other test, a 54, that's crazy. And even at idle before with the fans on, I would be at like around 54, 55 degrees idle. Now with the fan on, my idle is about 40 degrees. That's the difference of 14 degrees, 15 degrees. This is a huge difference. And just for reference, one more test I did again was Ada 64's GPU stress test with the max at 55 degrees. And of course, the clock was stable. So right there again is proof for me that this is absolutely working. And this is absolutely something you should be doing if you have an older GPU. Now, I'm not sure where the line is and where it changes. And it depends from manufacturer to manufacturer and depending on what kind of thermal paste they use but I should have probably done this at least a year ago, at least a year and a half ago. In fact, this is something that you should at least take into account when you're building a new computer. You should be taking baseline benchmarking of your PC and save that in a safe place so you can reference it in the future. Because for me, even a year ago, I'm pretty sure my GPU was hitting these temperatures. I don't know what they were originally because I didn't really check or I didn't really remember what they were. So if I had, I might have seen these differences over time and would have intervened earlier before I started having these problems. And considering this is the first time I've actually taken apart a GPU, I have to say it's a lot easier than I expected. And it wasn't uh, 
as scary as I thought it might have been. I was worried about breaking things. Didn't have any issues whatsoever. I encourage you to definitely try this out and tinker. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I wanna know if you guys have any best practices when it comes to GPU care. Do you change your GPU paste? And what paste would you use? But anyways, as always, I hope this video has been helpful for you. My name is Nick. This has been Tech Illiterate. Thank you for watching. Winston, what are you doing, buddy? Oh, kitty.